Thanks, man. That would be a lot. Because I was in San Francisco, but I'm really not. All right. So this is what gets us into this section, talking about electromagnetic radiation, electromagnetic spectrum, and all this. I'll go ahead and tell you where we are going. It's foreshadowing what's to come. We are dealing with the quantum model of the atom. That's my favorite units to get to. It is really cool. So we're going to deal with this. But there is a question that comes around. This question was asked in the early 1900s. What is light? You have to understand where this is kind of going. So everything was based around we could start categorizing things. And physics was imagined to have been almost completely complete at this point in the time. They look and they say, we know almost everything about everything. We just got a couple cracks that we need to fill. But we're pretty solid. It's pretty impressive. We're like, wow, we've almost known everything of everything that there is to know. If physics. Excellent. So then, everything can be ranked and broke down into two categories. The categories we got was a wave or a particle. And whenever we would look at these things, you could categorize things as them. Perfect example, you're at the pond. You take a rock. What would you categorize a rock as? A wave or a particle? Particle. Particle. Bingo. Yes. Now, you take said rock, you look at the water, you look at your beautiful Significant other, you're like, I'm going to impress them. You take that rock and you yeet that thing as hard as you can. Not skipping. And it hits the water. Yeah, no skipping. We just we just yeet. There's a bit of plunk. Yes. Okay, you got me? Okay. Yeet that thing out there. It hits the water and goes bloop. As it goes bloop. What do you see? Light my way. Rippling out, right? So these were the different classifications too. So when it comes to light, what? Can you make a sound effect for the lights? Thank you. I did that. I didn't need that. Like an envisionment. So this is where the whole question comes down to. What is light? What is this supposed to put? What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. I'm sorry. <laughs> What is light? Very interesting. Thomas Edison did not create it. You're thinking of the light bulb. Which is light. Which emits light. It is not light. I think David's right. David has you. So, here's the question. Jesus has not created light. No, that was gone. Yeah, you're right. So I have a question for you. What is light? How many of you look and you say light is a wave for your hand? I think it's neither one or the other. I think it's both. How many of you think it is a part? No, it's neither. It's both. How many of you are just not going to vote today? Appreciate the honesty. What makes you think both? Well, I, I, said, both. Both. I said neither. I think it can be both because I'm American. Because I said both. I think this is all I'm going to explain to you. But I'm going to explain. I think like the waves hit your eyes, they hit your eyes. The waves? So why is wave? Hits your eye. All right, lasers. Lasers are light. Light. Yeah. So there's a natural 
thing that occurs with waves. You see it whenever we eat it, the big rock into the pond and the waves radiate out. What happens to the wave? They keep they get smaller keep going and, and getting expanding. smaller, which is expanding. So they're expanding. So waves expand. So if you look on the board, you see my small little dot. Now watch. Same thing. No magic tricks. It ain't expanding. Oh, it's expanding. Oh. Now compare the size of the dot. I don't think Jackie's going. He's very I thought he was going to I thought he was going to say So what happened with it? It expanded. It expanded. So we would classify light as a wave. Wave. So we know that light is a wave. That's a simple reason. So this is where things got interesting. So we think we have everything figured out. So we know that light is a wave. But it's also a part. Like bingo, bingo. Why? Um, because it has to be emitted from the point. Like you have a light from the sun or a light bulb, and itself would be a particle. Yeah. 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 You need to know what parts of a wave are, what waves look like, how waves operate. Because you clearly can see that light is a wave, so now we need to know what's going to happen with waves that are interfering or decent. just doing different things. Other things have to be different. So let's look at a wave. It's definitely a bar graph. For those of you who are in trig, this is calculus. Trig function. You're doing math and calculus right now. Calculus has curves. Okay. In your trig class, you never graphed a function? A trig function? Yeah, but like, that's a sum function. It's more short. Yeah. It's just calculus. Trig. Yeah. Alright, so whenever you look at these parts of the wave that are important, because you have to understand parts of the wave to understand how we're going to measure waves. So the first thing you're going to look at is anybody know what the top peak, the very top is called? Well, nice guess, but no. I bet some of you used this this morning. No? We used this this morning. I guarantee it. It's For me personally, I'm not a huge fan of the toothpaste, but I do like the mouthwash. Uh, toothbrush. Call, call me? <laughs> no, I do. Listerine. Listerine. <laughs> Come on now. Tell me Listerine. Uh, Crest. I don't like Listerine. Listerine is like all oh, like ignites my mouth on fire. And it, I know how people think they're like, I feel the burn, it means my mouth's getting clean. But if my mouth can get clean without a burn, That's why I'm gonna get clean without the burn. That's why I just fish your bleach around the mouth. Feel the burn. And then you got the bottoms. The very low points of the waves. So you know what they are called? The top is a crest. I'm guessing the bottom is a crust. A very nice guess, but I'll take sad for Pigs time. like to eat out of these. There's a trough. There's a trough. So when you look at this, the crest is the very top. The troughs are the very bottom. Why in the world do we care about this? We care about this because of things that we look at, and it comes in terms of discussing the wavelength.
which is the length of a wave measured from the same two point on a wave. If I wanted to measure the wavelength, you have to go from the same point to the same point. So I have to go from crest to crest. That is a wavelength. It doesn't have to be crest to crest. It can be random point to random point, as long as it's the same two random points. It can be trough to trough. This is the whole thing we're looking at there. Now you break it down and you look at the frequency. Frequency is how often So you look at frequency, you would choose the certain point on the wave and you would start measuring from there. So if I measure from the crest, it's every time a crest would cross by, I'd count it, and then we would divide it out by the certain amount of waves in that certain allotted of time. Dakota, Dylan, and Lily Sansom to the office. Teachers, we will be sending uh, students down to the play a little bit later. We'll be going to grab and go first, and then we'll be going to the play. We need you to collect each student's $3 in the classroom. Send us a list of the students that paid along with the money to the office. Thank you. Also, listen, you know, in my money. Remember homecoming week or whatever, we're supposed to do crazy sock day or whatever for one of the days? I, I, I was on Amazon. I was on Amazon and I ordered a pair of socks that you can customize the photo of. And I was going to use that photo, no, one of those photos as the thing on the sock, but it wouldn't have came in until the 15th and we would have been way out of time. So I didn't. Should have used some shipping. Uh, dude, I have okay. I really just love to interrupt. Because now I have to collect your money. Good. I don't get to leave. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just take my money. I really need to see that. I've heard great things about it. Left some great reviews. Well, I haven't left. I've seen some great reviews that have I'm going under the impression that they meant to do that third period. They did. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is about the wave. Okay? So everybody looks at this point and goes, All right, man. Lights wave. Maybe not. It's neither. Which then brings us into a it's question. Because then scientists started wanting to look at things and say, well, okay, cool, man, whatever you got to say, dude, fine, whatever. Then scientists start looking and saying, what is an electron? That's far. You ever think sometimes just scientists ask too many questions that nobody cares about? 
lot. Same factor in this class, lot. no? Mm -hmm. So you're looking at an electron. What is an electron? Especially since the fact you like using your cell phone? No. Because it wasn't for these questions, you wouldn't have your cell phone. Science could have been covered in more So what is an electron? A negatively charged subatomic particle. Good job. Negatively charged. String theory is 12 years old. Subatomic particle. You know my favorite idea of string theory is how easy it is to mess with somebody's head. God, it's so easy. Do you know, do you know what the summation of all the integers from zero all the way to infinity, so zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way to infinity is equal to? I probably can care. Probably negative one twelfth. Exactly. Everybody's just right. I was going to say it was probably infinity, but... Nope, it's negative 112. Wow. <laughs> Strength theory, man. I don't like it. It just is. <laughs> there's, not, there's like a simple breakdown and explanation behind it, and I'm like, holy smokes, that works. What's the simple explanation? There's like three different summations, and you have to combine them together. But there's like a very complex reason behind why. And then someone looked and said, so you tell me if I took 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to a Googleplex and added it together, it's equal to negative 1 to They said, no, that's equal to a really big number. We're talking infinity. You never stop. And everyone's like, it don't make sense. It's like, we know it don't make sense, but it is what it is. It's the truth. You're so cool. All right, so negative charge subatomic part. But then there was a problem. There is a problem. Hopefully none of you have observed this before. All related scientists are dyslexic. No. <laughs> so they just cooked the entire category of science in general. Has anybody in here ever put a piece of metal in a microwave? I have. <laughs> <laughs> I've put a fork in a bottle. <laughs> what did it look like, Dave? <laughs> Booey. Like a lot of like sparks and stuff. Like yeah. yeah, give us more detail and more sound effects. Okay, the microwave is going to Do you need sparks flying off? And then I went, ah! And I opened it. And then we will be Not even bacon. Yeah, it's okay. So, so here's the question, David. Here, here's, here's our big question for you, okay? David, um, did you get a bunch of sparks? Yeah, there was quite a few. Quite a few? Did I didn't bother to count them. Which is interesting. Did you get your noodles? Well, the noodles didn't work. Did you get them? Yeah, I eventually made your noodles. Thought that. Here's the interesting thing. What is light? Light is classified as electromagnetic radiation. What is a form of electromagnetic radiation? Microwaves. Microwaves. What do microwaves emit? Food. Microwaves. That's why we call them microwaves. If you want to know how microwaves are working, the microwaves go in, excite the water molecules within the food, and that's what heats it up. So that's why if you put your mac and cheese in the microwave without water in it, you burn it. There's no water. So, yeah. What happens if you just stick a fork into the mouth? <laughs> Like it's a very shocking discovery. I think I should do it. The results may shock you. Alright. Here's the interesting part that happens. Electrons are particles. Radiation is wave. But then if I put a metal fork into my microwave and I turn it on, I get a bunch of sparks. What you're seeing with the sparks flying off is electrons flying off. 
So that brings up the question, how can a wave interfere with a particle? Um, monster energy, love passion, love to be. Well, here's the interesting thing that will take place. So you have a rock sitting on the beach. Yeah, not like, waves coming. If you got a fan, I mean, sometimes you can push like paper and stuff. Paper like, being particles with the fan. I'm sure I've got What were you talking about? Curve, so waves of electromagnetic radiation interfered with particles. Showing there must be something more. The something more we refer to has a very special name. You guys are familiar with this person without even knowing you're familiar with it. This person never imagined this is the reason they would have ever gotten their Nobel Prize. Rosa Parks? Definitely not. Yeah, because she got Did it. she not win the Nobel Prize? What is this? No, she won't touch Albert Einstein came up with the photoelectric effect. Explaining how electromagnetic radiation Could interfere with the particles. It's changed the whole game. Here's the reason why it changed the whole game is to this point everyone is like sparks to the office. Everyone accepted the fact that the electron uh, was a subatomic particle, and everybody accepted that electromagnetic radiation was a wave. But we couldn't explain the interaction between the two. So now it brings up the question why is a photon? What? light. So light is electromagnetic radiation. So we look at it and we want to know what is it? Is it a particle or is it a wave? Well you have something that tells you it's a wave but then the photoelectric effect shows that it's a particle. So what's the natural conclusion to come to? They're both. It's both. But how can something be both? Ain't nothing both. Except light. It's one or the other.
light is waves and particles. So. I was right since then. No, you can't explain that. Actually, the opposite. Uh, you, you said neither. You were kind of the. Opposite. So here's the reason when you look at these how can light be a wave and a particle? It has properties of both. example of this is looking at the photoelectric effect. Photoelectric effect. I take a piece of metal. Doing a piece of metal, there are electrons just hanging out. And then I decide I'm going to put it in a tanning bed. Tanning bed? Yeah. Because what's in tanning beds? Microradiation. Light. Waves. Particles. People. I tell you, tanning beds are bad because tanning beds can cause cancer. cancer. What type of cancer? Skin cancer. cancer. So you can get skin cancer from it because radiation. it uses radiation. Microwaves. Heat. Gamma rays. Ultraviolet rays. Color. How many rays? <laughs> I was driving. Yeah, I know. You just keep throwing out rays. Which is ultraviolet rays. Okay. So UV rays, which are ultraviolet rays, come in. Whenever this happened, well, say it has happened. Something interesting takes place. Electrons start shooting off. This was and still is the photoelectric effect. Light interfering with a particle. Particles getting shot off. Yeah. Is this an example or is this how, actually how they found out? Uh, probably can make a tanning bed. This is just an example. Okay. Like they were taking pieces of metal and they could shine light on it and it would shoot electrons off. I'm not telling you if you went home and took aluminum foil and threw it in your tanning bed, you're going to see electrons pop off. I am telling you that unless your like, silverware has a specific coating on it and you throw it in a microwave and you turn it on, then yeah, you're going to see some sparks fly. Right, David? Yeah. I want to do it now. Mr. Hall holds no responsibility for whatever you do at your home with your microwaves. That's between you and your parents. My mom won't care. I got a feeling she's going to care very much. This is what's taking place. Now, listen. I threw a lot of information at you. You have to understand something, especially with the quiz coming up on Friday. You need to understand and be able to explain parts of this, okay? Come tomorrow, there's going to be a lot more focus on the whole explanation aspect. So before we get out of here, what I want to look at... So, yesterday, we had a wonderful day. No, we talked about some waves. So, picking up here, uh, before we get too carried away, I want to remind you that on uh, Friday, it's your quiz. You guys have me tomorrow, so we go for you. Great time, man. Besides that, uh, I will tell you this, because I feel like you need to be aware that there is um, not a lot of new information that has been covered. So it's good. You get to learn a lesson early on. Once you learn it, don't forget it. All is fair game. Because here's what's going to happen. We're going to have to, uh, you know, how do you say, uh, you know, put some more conversion. That's a good idea. There we go. Lovely. Yeah, let's get with it over here. 
Yeah, I'm talking about it. You've got to know how to do a mobile version. you got to know uh, all things. I can buy together. So make sure and be looking and studying for that. So like, that's wrong. When yep. we get to the end of the year, well, I still have to go back and like look at my, my notes from the study, the study for the test. I mean, not end of the year test, but like test towards the end of the year. Yeah, it's for a game, man. So like, you know, week 20, I can ask you, what's the top of a wave called? All right, so, we want to see if you guys can see something today. Hopefully this works out well. If it doesn't, well then, that works out great. Alright, if you need to move closer, feel free to move closer. Well, what I'm wanting you to see, do you see the dot? This is my good laser. It's, it's not like, really a dot for me, I have astigmatism. I have astigmatism too, and it's still a dot. It's a rhombus. Why don't you wear glasses? I haven't seen the eye doctor yet. I mean, I feel the. Uh, now, how in the world do you have astigmatism? I, I feel the eye test on my. Uh, it doesn't mean you have astigmatism. No, I mean like I. I mean I. I know I can. I mean, like I can't see light like that. Like, like it's really, really like weird shapes and stuff. Yeah. Like it lights, which is not. So you self-diagnose yourself with astigmatism? I mean, yeah. I don't think I think it's the hardest thing in the world to diagnose. Do you know what stigmatism is? Um, something to do with a lot. No, it's something to do with the eye. Oh, well, yeah, well, well, you, your eye perceives a lot. No. This is with the shape of the eye. Eye's supposed to be round like a basketball, but if you have astigmatism, it makes points like a football. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I like, you know, I have a yeah. prosthetic eye, I pop out sometimes, take a look at study. It's pretty funny. I love it, too. All right, anyways, you see the dot? Here's the cool thing. So if I run it through a wire mesh, we can see. Dot with lines. With lines. Interesting. Do you see the dark bands? Yeah. Where's it coming from? The wire. So it's the wire. It gets bigger if I go over there. Yeah. So I can see the ball. But here's the thing, what's the property of light? Part of the wave. Yeah, it's both. It's a photon. So what's the wave part property? What do waves do? Um, they radiate, or um, well, they not radiate, expand. It's like, they they radiate. expand out. So, why am I getting dark bands? Because all uh, the light can't travel through the wire. But the light that goes through it should expand and fill it. It's more concentrated to a oh. finer point. Oh no. It just wants to be different, I guess. It just wants to be a square laser point. Yeah, I'm saying it's a dog. Yeah, you can't see it too good there. That's a dog. Yeah, that's a dog. That one was very clearly a rock. A red one was definitely a dog though. Watch your ass. No. Oh god. So why do I start with that? This starts to show you something cool. So how do we know light is a part? It's yes. A photon. How do we know photons exist? Huh? How do we know photons exist? 
the photo electric effect. So how do we know that electromagnetic radiation is a particle? Wasn't it like throwing off electrons or something? Yeah. So the photoelectric effect. But why does that explain that electromagnetic radiation is a particle called a photon? Um, What's electrons? Oh, you mean know, like if you put a thing in a tandem bed, the little things pop out. What? Yeah, you said yesterday when you put like a little like um, like I, metal I, in a tandem bed, the little things pop out. Yeah, I said as an example. I'm pretty sure that's not going to happen, but it's just like an example. It's like you know, if you take a piece of metal and throw it in your microwave, it will happen. Okay. When you look at photons, what are photons? Or a quantum of energy with no mass. So a quantum of energy with no mass. So this is what the particle of electromagnetic radiation is. <coughs> Since we have photons, how can we explain that they exist? Well, the photoelectric effect is where if we shine different forms of electromagnetic radiation on a piece of metal, eventually electrons are going to shoot off of the metal once it hits the certain frequency of the wave. So it's not about the intensity, it's about the frequency behind it. But an electron is a negatively charged subatomic particle. If it's a negatively charged subatomic particle, what's an electron? Negatively charged subatomic particle. Yeah. So we classify it as a particle. Well, waves can't interfere with particles. Particles can only interfere with particles showing that electromagnetic radiation has to be a form of particle. For sure. Got me? 100%. Very important you can explain that one. Because here's the second one. What explains electromagnetic Radiation. We really need to refine abbreviation of this. Is a wave. So I went ahead and I showed you like one property that helps us with this: the natural uh, radiation expansion of light. But so there's another one that comes into play when you look at this. There's a very famous experiment. This experiment will come back up in this class. It is one of my favorite experiments to talk about. It is the famous double slit experiment. So you look at the double slit experiment, this is what it's like. I have a wall. In the said wall, I put two slits, hence double slit. Back behind it, there is a light source. What is light? It's a form of what? electromagnetic radiation. Okay, and we know that it is a wave. And what do waves naturally do? And disperse out. No. So they're going to disperse outward. So I have some light source with an opening. So it keeps radiating out, right? Now here's the interesting thing. You have on the back wall of the room, 
detector. So if we look at this, the setup, then what's going to happen? The light radiates outward, expands until it hits the wall. Then it hits right here where two slits are. Well, what's going to happen there? It's going to go through. Huh? It's going to go through. So it'll go through. Yeah. Okay. So let's look at the first slit. What happens at the first slit when the light hits it? It goes through and what? Expands, radiates, yes. That's simple. But then, look at the second slit. What happens at the second slit? Oh, expands also. Okay. So whenever I do this, if I look on the back wall, something very interesting takes place. I get bands of light and bands of not light. But shouldn't light, like light radiates out, shouldn't it fill in all the space? So what's happening? So what happens here on the back wall is we see something called an interference pattern. Yeah. Now, interference patterns are properties. And I'm not going to write it down what an interference pattern is if you literally see it right here. It's like bands of light, no bands of light. Light, no light. Light, no light. You'll find out why we call it an interference pattern. So the interference pattern is taking place here. And this is a property of waves. So this is how you can show that, that light or electromagnetic radiation is a form of a wave. Now we gotta explain why this is happening. You have two waves, different wavelengths, different frequencies, but this will this will get us to prove our points. So there's some certain points I want to look at.
then we'll lift the reds. So I'll go ahead and tell you, this is what's happening. Like, when I took the wire mesh and I signed the laser through it, it's the same principle as the double slit. We should see those bands fill in, but we don't. And there's a reason for this, is because of this principle happening right here. David spot on with it that the lines and the waves are interacting with each other. So if you look at the blue spots, you'll see the same points of the waves match up, which give us something called constructive interference. Now, whenever you look at construction, what happens whenever construction is taking place? If I hire from some contractors to do construction for me, what are they going to do? They're going to build something. That's what's happening here with constructive interference. The same parts of the wave are meeting up. building each other up, giving the bands of light. Examples of places that you can see this, so same parts of the wave. We have a crest, meets with a crest, trough with trough. Now it doesn't have to be crest and crest and trough and trough. It just has to be the same points on the waves. That's why I marked these blue lines here blue lines here. They're not exactly at the same, but they're very similar. So here's a crest and here's almost a crest. They're going to build each other up. They're not opposing each other. Then that comes typically the guy's favorite one. I gotta stick with the color, man. Mm -hmm. They break each other now. Like Video <clears throat> doesn't look weird if I don't. Red marks. These are opposite points of the way. If the same points build each other up, what do you think's happening on the opposite? Down, you, know? you got that right, baby. It's demolition day. Or rip that thing up. Bloods versus bloods. So what happens if you tear something down? It's not called construction, it's called destruction. Destruction, which is why we had destructive interference. So if constructive interference is the same parts of the waves meeting up, what happens at destructive interference? Look at you. Opposite parts of the wave meet up 
canceling. Each other out. Giving. The bands. Points like this, which you'll see. So we're looking for opposite points. So this is where crest and trough meet. Does it have to be crest and trough? No, it just has to be the opposite points on the way. These are really big ideas and concepts that we get into that really mean a lot. So I need you to be able to understand first explaining how we know electromagnetic radiation is a wave. I introduced it to you with a natural expansion. But that's not good enough now. This right here is the big idea we get the interference patterns from the waves interfering with each other. Well, what types of interference is happening? Why am I seeing this that I'm seeing? So explaining why the interference pattern is created. Why do I get bands of light and bands of darkness? The reason for it is I get constructive interference that builds up. That's why we get the bands of light and the destructive interference it's canceling each other out. Go out me. Not only that, but you also need to be able to explain to me how you know electromagnetic radiation is a particle. Are you got me? So this brings in a major idea, and this is what really shifted everything for us in the scientific community. What is electromagnetic radiation qualified to be? A wave or a particle? Wave. Well, it's a wave. Okay, very good. Wait, I thought it was a particle. It's both. I thought it was a wave. It's both. It's both. I thought it was a particle. Yeah, it's both. Well, you can't be both. How can you be both? You I mean, look at life. How the world does that happen? Everything in the world has been classified as a wave or a particle. Now you're just looking and saying all of a sudden it's both? Yeah. Pretty much. Well, okay. I didn't make it up, but this like some of my undergrad, the science committee did. Some of them That's where you're doing I think they didn't scratch everything and start over. Fix some things. So Albert Einstein proposed this then, because what came first was this, but nobody could understand or explain why light would interfere with particles. So Albert Einstein explained the photoelectric effect, and at the end of it, he looks and goes, Bruh! It's both! Well, you're talking about waves and particles that are kind of like yin and yang when it comes to the electromagnetic negative uh, radiation. Whoa! Oh, what a good one, yes. So a wave particle duality states that electromagnetic radiation is a wave and a particle. So 
So if you want to explain this, you can explain by double slit. Experiment showing wave properties. So electric effect.